Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. This is episode five of a mini series on passwords and clearly by the title and the thumbnail, you can see that this is inspired by season five of Money Heist dropping on Netflix. What an exciting series this is. Um, so yeah, today we're talking about secure elements. Uh, this is part of a series on passwords. It's derived from a kind of white paper I wrote called Exploring a Password Policy Rabbit Hole. I will link to this in the description. The whole uh, paper and this series is supported by Trust Token. I work on their security team and they allowed me to share this with you. Um, all right, so throughout the series, we've talked about a whole bunch of things, common misconceptions about passwords, password entropy, uh, hardware random number generators, key derivation functions. And today we are talking about secure elements. I forgot to mention, please like this video. That really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it makes sure that this video gets discovered by way more people. So yeah, thanks. Uh, so yeah, secure elements are a little computer or a fortress type computer within our computers. Um, it's a specific type of system on a chip that is designed to mitigate side channel attacks. It's designed to compartmentalize sensitive use cases away from the main computer. So away from the CPU, and the memory in most cases. Uh, secure elements vary in implementations and unfortunately they're often proprietary, meaning we are told that they are secure, but we cannot really prove it, which really sucks uh, if we're honest here in the context of the privacy guides, but at least in the context of Macs and iOS devices, Apple has done a pretty decent job at explaining how they work and which functionalities they actually take away from the main computer. Uh, in the context of modern Macs and modern iOS uh, or iPhone devices, iPads, stuff like this, um, we use the T2 chip, at least on macOS. I haven't deep digged, dug deep into this in the context of iOS, but both have what Apple likes to call a secure enclave. Uh, secure enclave is essentially an Apple sexy word for a secure element. And the secure element does a whole bunch of things. So I've linked to a lot of documentation in the white paper, but uh, among other things, one feature that I really appreciate of that secure element is the fact that the secure element is really locked down and within itself, it has uh, a hardware random number generator. So it's capable of self-generating truly random data from within. And it is also uh, able to generate encryption keys using that hardware random number generator. So during the manufacturing process, the chip itself will generate a unique identifier that theoretically it's impossible to exfiltrate. And that unique ID, that is what is going to essentially encrypt the SSD storage using a media key. So let's, let's take a few steps back here because it's quite a beautiful uh, way of doing things. So the secure element, a chip that one cannot exfiltrate you know, encryption keys from, self-generates a key that key is used to encrypt the information on the SSD natively, meaning when you get a Mac with a T2 equipped chip, file vault, or at least encryption, is kind of enabled by default. And that's really cool. I don't know if you've noticed uh, on older Macs when one would enable file vault, it would take a pretty long time to encrypt. So we would have a progress bar and we would have to wait, depending on the size of the hard drive and the speed of the SSD, a few hours. Uh, in the context of T2 equipped Max, when you enable file vault, boom, it's done automatically, instantly. Now there's no magic to this. The reason why is because the information was pre-encrypted. So how that works is on the SSD, uh, there is something called effaceable storage. Uh, effaceable storage is a specific type of SSD storage that can be addressed specifically. So what I mean here is, if you've been watching the privacy guides for some time, I've mentioned a million times, one cannot erase data or what we call secure erase data from you know SD cards or from SSDs. Uh, that's due to where leveling, it's because of the architecture of that kind of storage. But in the context of effaceable storage, uh, it's a specific type of device that allows us to address very specific sections of the SSD and secure erase them. So. What works, uh, how that works here is the secure element will uh, use that UID to encrypt what is called a media key. The media key is a specific AES 256-bit encryption key that is then used to encrypt all the information on the SSD. So that media key, which by the way is stored in effaceable 
storage, that one uh, is what is encrypting the information. And that key is then encrypted when one installs macOS using the UID. The UID is written to the secure element or called it's called fuse, so it's fused to the secure element and it cannot be exfiltrated. So when one enable file vault, whoa, when one enables file vault, sorry, on you or Max, what really happens there is there is key derivation that is used to take the UID and to take one's password or passphrase and using both, that media key is then wrapped in a new layer of encryption and that media key never really changes. And since it's AES-256, it's impossible to brute force it. So that is quite some nice engineering there. So uh, am I forgetting something here? Yeah, so when one remotes erase a Mac using Find My Mac, or when uh, you know a, a wrong pin is entered 10 times on an iOS device and you know the feature to erase the storage is enabled, uh, well, essentially what is happening there is the media key is essentially destroyed. And since the media key is destroyed, well, one does not need to actually destroy all of the information because without that media key, given its 256-bit encryption, it is theoretically impossible to access that information. And since it's using a fastable storage, it's capable of pulling this off, something that we would not be able to do on standard uh, you know, flash drives. So that's quite a beautiful design there. Um, so uh, by the way, uh, what, what I just mentioned, how the media key is flushed and then one cannot access the information, that is called crypto shredding. So I hope this was insightful. Um, yeah, I have a whole bunch of other content. We're almost done with the password series, by the way, and I have a massive amount of content coming your way on different topics. I'll have a series on YubiKeys. I'll, I will be actually talking about M1 Max and Big Sur. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So yeah, if you haven't smashed that subscribe button, please do so, and I will see you soon. Bye.